<sighs> yeah, so I'm sometimes known as the OpenStack guy, often known now as the Cloud Foundry guy. Uh, I'm not doing either of those things today. And also, apparently, I have no slides, which is okay. Um, they'll catch up at some point, maybe. Maybe not. I can do it without the slides. Okay, there we go. So, I worked at NASA for a couple of years. And I went there because I really believed in this dream of uh, the government as an ally. And I think NASA, in particular, is this place where many of us as children dreamed of going to work. Uh, and it was probably the worst experience of my life just to realize that it was also a bureaucracy. Um, and so one of the things I, I started working on when I was there was this idea of how do we produce an antidote to bureaucracy. Um, and I think of, of red tape. This is actually one of the original kinds of red tape. People don't realize when they say red tape, what are we actually talking about? We're talking about a kind of string that was used to tie around documents when they were important to differentiate them from documents that were not important, which had regular twine. And trying to cut red tape doesn't actually help. What happens is uh, you produce more red tape. Bureaucracy expands to fulfill the needs of the expanding bureaucracy. That was Oscar Wilde. Um, so I want to talk about an antidote, which is not the opposite. This is not about getting rid of bureaucracy. This is about um, automating it. It has to exist. And these documents have to exist. They have things like uh, you know, property titles in them and stuff. In, in IT systems, these are typically what we think of as security documents. And for those of you who've worked in government, you can't run a piece of software for a government agency without what's called a security plan, an SSP. Um, they're basically a book. So every time you write a piece of software, you also have to write a book. Um, most of you, I think, have not written books. I've never written a book. Actually, the last time I agreed to write a book, um, I got shingles. <laughs> I've had to lie down for six weeks. So um, the idea of writing a book actually terrifies me. <laughs> At NASA, I paid somebody else to write the book for our, for our software. Um, and this is kind of the experience that people have. Uh, increasingly, we see government agencies trying to do agile. They're like, hey, we're really excited. Uh, every two weeks, we have a new version of our software that sits on the shelf for nine months until we write a new version of the book so that we're allowed to push it into production, which is really, really depressing, which is why almost nobody stays and works for the government for very long. Um, I know there's a bunch of folks from 18F here, uh, and I, um, I have a ton of respect for them, um, primarily because they're still trying to do something that I gave up trying to do many years ago, but now they've made me feel so embarrassed about giving up that I've come back to, to sort of try again. Um, and I, I titled this as reported by Joshua McKenty, just because I want to point out I'm reporting something that I see happening, that I've been involved in, uh, but by no means is my project. Uh, and it's also pretty early. I remember uh, when we first launched OpenStack, it was 6,000 lines of code. And you were like, we don't get it. Why is this interesting? Why is this important? And now people are like, oh yeah, OpenStack, we've heard of that. Uh, we don't have to have that conversation anymore. So I like to talk about things when it's a few hundred to a few thousand lines of code um, and nobody really understands why it's important yet. All right, the little bit of history. This is not a brand new idea. Folks have had the idea of automating compliance or automating certification for a long time. Uh, Donald Knuth is uh, sort of, and which I'm probably mispronouncing, and everyone's going to laugh at me. Uh, uh, literate programming, the idea that your code was also a book, right? Kind of a cool idea. Um, for some reason, every time I bring this up these days, people hate me, uh, and I think it's something to do with the joke about the heap. I know there was a, there's a thread on Twitter. I tried to suggest that this was a good metaphor, but I still think it's a good metaphor. Um, Chris Hoff organized and ran a thing called A6 originally, and then it was turned into something called Cloud Audit. Uh, I did an implementation of Cloud Audit uh, at Piston, trying to get that working in the OpenStack community early on, and it was too early, and people were like, we don't get it. Why does this make any sense? Um, 
this idea of, uh, I don't know, anytime you have tests that go along with your code, that's part of your code that says this is how the code should work and what it should do, this is on this path towards why do we have to write a book to go along with the code? We just haven't quite got there yet. So I uh, like YAML, and um, there are cool things happening with YAML these days. One of them is Gitbook. How many of you have heard of Gitbook? A couple of you. OK, you're going to learn something. Everyone's going to learn something. Gitbook is really cool. So in between uh, myself and primarily uh, Diego over at 18F, um, we started playing around with what a YAML format for controls would look like. A control is basically the piece of documentation that says our system runs in this way, and therefore it's secure. It meets this requirement. So if, you, if your passwords need to be longer than eight characters, that's a control. If, uh, if you need to prove that any event that happens in your software that, that changes system state is logged for audit, that's a control. How do you prove this? So we started playing around with this format. Um, and now there's a bunch of other people at 18F that have been working on documenting all of the controls for cloud.gov using this, this sort of drafty, I don't even think we would call it a standard. I think we just call it YAML. Um, and so you start with, OK, we got some YAML. Now what? Well, we need a pipeline, right? I'm a CI, CD guy. I believe that the center of every great system these days is your continuous integration pipeline. So. Uh, at Pivotal, we accidentally started a pretty cool CI project called Concourse. How many of you have heard of Concourse? OK, second cool thing you're learning today. Concourse is amazing. Um, if you like dependency injection, which many hipster programmers do these days, the idea of, hey, I just I say what my system needs rather than doing really perverse things to get it started, think of Concourse as like the first CI system to have dependency injection. So rather than saying, run this job after this job, run this job after this job, get really confused and crash, um, you just say, oh, this job doesn't work unless these other things happen first. And then Concourse figures it out. So you can describe a pipeline of docs. And you say, oh, I've got some YAML that comes from, say, Cloud Foundry that says the kind of controls provided by Cloud Foundry. I've got some YAML that comes from the GSA that says, these are the controls required under this particular standard. I write my own little YAML file that says, this is how I'm running this system. And it pulls in those other two YAMLs. And we have a pipeline that merges a bunch of those together. So you're just smashing YAML up. Um, and then this last step is, is Gitbook. Gitbook, um, when it started, consumed you know, Markdown and uh, I think ASCII doc, which feel pretty close to YAML, and it turns out you know, cramming YAML into Gitbook is not as weird as it sounds. So all of a sudden, you've got a bunch of different YAML, merge it together, you put it into a formatter, and out of that you get a PDF or a Word doc or a Mobi or EPUB that you can read on your phone. And you can give that to the auditor and say, here's my book. It's 150 pages. You also get an OpenSCAP file or a CIS benchmark audit file. So you can dump that into Nessus and say, scan my system. This is exactly how it should work. If it doesn't work, that's a failing test. And if those of you have ever actually lived in government, government lives by waivers. There's no such thing as compliance. Nobody in the history of government has ever achieved compliance with their own rules. It's not possible. So <laughs> the goal of this is to know how far out of compliance you are. How much risk are you embracing? And somebody is going to sign off and say, OK, that's an acceptable amount of risk. What they want is a list. So you generate a list that says, these are the risks we're accepting. These are the controls that we know the standard says we're supposed to have, and we know that our system doesn't support. That's a, that's a waiver list. You generate that too. Now, the nice thing about having all of this in CI is when our, our esteemed colleagues at NIST come out with a new format for this, this standard thing called 800-53, or uh, FedRAMP for instance, or, or HIPAA, or PCI compliance. When the new standard comes out, they're going to update their Git repo. Concourse is going to notice. It's going to say, oh, OK, uh, let's rebuild the docs and see which waivers we need now. It's a versioned artifact. Do you want 
to go share that with the auditor, the PDF is in an S3 bucket. So all of a sudden, your audit and compliance feels like programming instead of feeling like this evil parallel activity that, that makes kids cry when they think about the fact that NASA runs that way too. Um, Spruce, I stuck that in the middle. That's uh, this very new project. It's literally, I think, last week. It's a YAML merging tool. <laughs> so I said I was sort of talking about magically smushing YAML together. You actually need something that does that. Spruce does a really good job. All right, I mentioned that I'm reporting on this. I, uh, I didn't really invent it. I happened to like, get really angry about having to write a book at one point. Um, so Diego, I mentioned before, he's been doing a lot of the heavy lifting over at 18F, as has the rest of the team there. Uh, Chris Hoff, I think you got to sort of give him props for trying to do this way too early. And Cloud Audit is still a CSA project. It's still moving forward. It kind of solves a different problem, but it's very necessarily in parallel. And Alex is the, uh, the inventor and lead of Concourse. Um, oh, and then the Stark and Wayne guys put together Spruce. So there is now enough of these tools. And this is, this is not a, hey, here's this final project, right? But this is what's happening in a really interesting community that could probably use some help. Because if it's just like me and Alex plus the 18F folks, like we're going to get a lot done. It's terrifying how much is, is being done right now. So just to put this in context, cloud.gov, if you haven't heard about it yet, is Cloud Foundry running on Amazon for government agencies, run and managed by the 18F. It's insanely cool. And they're using roughly this process, not yet using Concourse and Spruce. They're using Python scripts and some, some let's say, rough prototypes. But they're using that to produce their certifications. So we've been trying to do this for a long time. And I think maybe our ideas were too early. The tools weren't quite mature enough. Uh, the auditors weren't ready to say, oh, wait, you, oh, you auto-generated your security plan? How is that a good idea? But actually, we all know that things that we do by hand are never as reliable as things that we do with a tool. That's why we build tools, right? So let's, do, let's take this last piece of IT and use automation. So I want you all to get involved. Um, I expect a pull request from every one of you by the end of the day. No, seriously, what would be cool is if your software, your open source project has ever been used by government, and trust me, it probably has, think about documenting your controls in YAML and putting them in your repo in the root somewhere so that we can point these sorts of pipelines at them and say, oh, guess what? If you're using Redis or RabbitMQ in your system, here are the security properties of Redis or Rabbit. Here's how they dovetail together. So this is the last place, I think, where open source has never actually gotten to be open source. The security, site security plan, I have never seen one even in the public domain. The reason is the contractors that write them get paid ridiculous amounts of money to write the same 150-page book over and over again for every project. Um, so when we started working on this in August, I guess, July or August, it was the first time anyone had done CC0 licensed IT security for government. So please go and submit patches. I would really ask, keep it CC0. If you make it like attribution, we don't have a mechanism yet to start keeping track of who contributed what. So if it's all like share alike and buy, I'll go crazy and we won't really be able to use it. And I'm already crazy, those of you who know me well. So those are a bunch of repos to go and have a look at. Uh, Concourse.ci by itself is really cool. Um, I'm putting up some more documentation under the open control label. Uh, so there's a, now a GitHub pages site that just has a diagram of sort of how this fits together. And I do have a Concourse pipeline running. As soon as I think the security stuff is buttoned down, I'll share that URL as well. Um, and that's, uh, that's kind of it. Thank you very much. <laughs>